Good evening and welcome to the Board of Trustees regular meeting dated June 8th, 2021. It is actually 7.30 p.m. Madam Clerk, take the roll. Mayor Vorderer? Here. Trustee Stalker? Here. Trustee Olenichak? Here. Trustee Desmond? Here. Trustee Phelan? Here. Trustee Pembroke? Here. Trustee Mala? Here. We have a quorum. Uh, Trustee uh, Desmond would like to participate in our meeting tonight telephonically. Is there a motion? Make a motion. I'm sorry, Alex. Motion. Alex, mo second. Second. Was there a second? I did, yes. Okay, Trustee Stalker. Mm -hmm. Trustee Stalker? Yes. yes. Trustee Olenichek? Yes. Trustee Phelan? Yes. Trustee Pembroke? Yes. Trustee Mala? Yes. Motion passes. Are you there, Desmond? Can you hear me, Trustee Desmond? <coughs> Good, we can hear you. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Veterans, police salute the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> I'm told there are no public comments tonight. Are, uh, is there a conflict of interest or anything on this agenda tonight? Hearing none, we'll move on to number five on the agenda, a request for the approval of the St. Catherine of Alexander charge on the 5K to be held Saturday, August 13, 2021. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. I'll second it. Trustee Stalker? Yes. Trustee Olenichek? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Phelan? Yes. Trustee Pembroke? Yes. Trustee Mallow? Yes. Motion, Motion passed. Pass. Uh, six on the agenda is the approval of the meeting minutes dated May 25th, 2021. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. I'll second. Roll call. Trustee Stalker? <coughs> yes. Trustee Pembroke? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Phelan? Yes. Trustee Mallow? Yes. Trustee Olenichek? Yes. Uh, new business by village trustees. We'll start in District 1. Uh, Trustee Desmond, you have anything? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just one quick thing. Um, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, I would just like to uh, wish uh, Mary Oliger. Um, she has been a resident of Oak Lawn for 71 years and will be celebrating her 100th birthday on June 16th. So I would like to, to wish her a very happy birthday. Thank you, Trustee Desmond. There will be a parade honoring uh, Mary on the 16th. They're looking for over 100 cars. They'll be meeting at 89th in Austin. I'll be led by our police department. Is that correct, Chief? And uh, I will be there, too, to celebrate that great accomplishment of living to be 100. I hope we all make it. Amen. Uh, Trustee uh, District 2. Yes, thank you, uh, Mayor and Board. I just want to give everyone an update on the Safety Act. I know that... Um, the uh, um, residents of the village of Oak Lawn heard the uh, cry for help, and I know that they did get in touch with their legislators. Um, in the 11th hour, almost 12th hour, House Bill 3443 SA5 uh, was passed. Uh, it was a good start uh, for um, listening to the police department and the police officers, and it was backed by the police association. I know that there's uh, some, some major issues that uh, are still out there uh, and how the bill works is uh, how they deferred the major issues is they put them out to year 20, 22, 23, uh, so things can be worked on. But I do want to let the residents know that it, it does pay to call your local elected representatives, and I know that it made it a difference. I know that uh, um, Representative Burke, <coughs> Representative Flower, and uh, Senator Cunningham uh, all told me that they received multiple numerous phone calls letting our state representatives know that we in the village of Oak Lawn support our police and we're not happy with the Safety Act. Uh, so I, I, I do think that this is a good first start. Chief, I don't know if you want to add anything on there. No, I actually, Trustee, I think you covered it, but there is still a lot of work to be done. 
Um, I've gotten about halfway through the uh, the amended bill, just, and it looks like they kind of, like you said, just push stuff down the road. But it does look like some of the stuff that uh, I have read, they, there's more reasonable wording in there. You know, it makes us more able to comply with the law than before. There were just some stuff that was put in there that there was no way we could have, like, for instance, the tasers, it, it, they limited the targeting area to where they basically rendered the weapon ineffective. I basically just have to shelf them. So um, there's still some work to be done, but it is progress. And I'd like to thank also the, the legislators, Burke and Cunningham, as I reached out to them too, and they, and they reached out to me for input. So, um, and I'd like to thank our residents that, that helped us too. Thank you. Now, one of the key things in reading this um, legislation, I didn't see, they call it a safety act. I didn't see anything in there about protecting a police officer when he is on the line and somebody is spitting at them, verbally assaulting them. There was no language that protected the police officer as they were doing their job. And I will tell you that that's very, very concerning if they want to call it the Safety Act and they're not doing anything to help the police officers in their job. So I know that uh, this board and uh, the residents of the Village of Oak Lawn will continue to follow this and we will continue to support our police department <clears throat> you guys do a great job protecting us we need to continue to do our work making sure our legislators know that we support our police thank you thank you thank you trustee olenice hello uh thank you mayor um i do have a couple reminders um just in regards to some of the events that we have coming up um we will have our next meeting after these events so i just kind of wanted to put out to the residents um the sunday concert our first Sunday concert will be held on June 27th, uh, right here at the Village Green, and that will start at 7 p.m. Um, then the 4th of July Parade. The 4th of July Parade will be held on Saturday, July 3rd, um, starting at 4 p.m. This will start uh, in the 5th, 3rd parking lot across from the Whistle. Um, so if, uh, if we can get our residents all the way down there, and, and that's, where the, uh, that's where the start of it will be. Um, that evening, we'll have another uh, concert on the green that will happen at 6.30. Uh, South City Revival will be playing from 6.30 to 10, also right here on uh, the Village Green. So those are the two reminders I wanted to make sure everybody knew about um, before our next meeting because they will be over with. So thank you so much. Thank you, Trustee Mayor. <laughs> Trustee Pembroke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No new business. Thank you. Trustee Stalker. Yeah, I just want to mention to the, uh, those uh, folks that will be watching and listening at home is that uh, we're back in the boardroom. We're sitting on the dais. We're within inches of each other. There's a, a gallery of people in the room. And boy, is it good to be back. So <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Trustee Stalker. Trustee Phelan? I can't follow that. Nothing this evening. <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Shelley. Uh, Village Manager's Report. Good morning, Mayor and Board. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, yes. <laughs> Mayor and Board. Um, yeah, a couple items. Uh, the first item, um, I'd like to uh, bring Chris Lavoie um, up to the podium so he can talk about, um, as all Oakland residents know, and this board knows for sure, um, about the uh, flooding issue that Oakland has and has had for years. Um, so the board and, um, and the former mayor took on the uh, responsibility of hiring Chris and have Chris come out and do a study uh, to uh, mitigate the issues that, that we've had. And uh, I think uh, his presentation tonight um, will uh, clarify that uh, process for you. So I'll turn it over to Chris. Yes, good evening and thank you for having me. Uh, just recently, uh, we had Congressman Marie Newman here at the village to discuss funding opportunities for various projects throughout the village, in particular, some of the stormwater related issues. And um, I have to tell you that I, I was very impressed with her uh, navigating through some of the, the funding opportunities that she has already in, in process, bills that she already has in process that are under review. And um, the, two, the couple takeaways uh, from that was uh, obviously, number one, her, her position on uh, supporting uh, projects in this area, in particular, the support that I felt that, that she was very sincere about uh, finding any way possible that she could help us. Uh, I put together a little summary for you here, just a bullet point list of, of the takeaways. After she was here, uh, village staff uh, and I and, and some of the trustees got together and we huddled up and we, we put together a, uh, uh, a plan that's specifically going to address uh, her 
bullet points that she came up with. Two very significant things was, number one, uh, she asked for a shovel-ready project because she has a bill right now that she could apply funds to that she would like us to deliver, the village to deliver, a shovel-ready project. Number two, she asked us for a, a comprehensive uh, summary of the overall projects uh, that, that would be involved in, in some of these large-scale uh, stormwater-related issues, in particular Stony Preserve. So uh, and she also requested, uh, uh, what do I think that the funding amount is? And I, I think I got a, a pretty good chuckle out of the room because I, I asked her for $50 million, and uh, you know whatever you can do to, to meet that goal, we could solve the problems here in Oak Lawn. Uh, and then she she came back and asked me, well, what would you take? And I tell you, I told her forty nine five. <laughs> so, uh, but what we're doing here and what you have on your in front of you is a summary, where I know full well that uh, I'm not going to have uh, Congressman Congresswoman Marie Newman walk through that door with fifty million dollars. <coughs> but I do know from the takeaway from those meetings is there is money available, not only with a current bill but on some other grant programs and other things that are happening in Washington. And I want to deliver, we want to deliver specifically what she asked for, and that is the overall summary of what it's going to take to do Stony Creek, and then what is it going to take to get her a, uh, a project that's going to be shovel-ready uh, for funding immediately. Uh, that will be the, the best impact. Now, the project that we selected wasn't one of the ones that uh, MWRD included in their study. Uh, what we did do is we looked at it as part of our work uh, and, and it, the proximity to the automotion site and adding storage that would be a direct impact in a, to that particular site in that area uh, would be the, the most benefit and the least amount of impact uh, to the community. So. We are looking at our shovel-ready project of expanding the detention volume behind Mariano's uh, significantly, probably six acre feet or more uh, in that pond by relocating those pipes and consolidating those ponds and, and, and broadening the, the capacity in that pond. That's the shovel-ready project I'd like to deliver to Congresswoman uh, Newman and uh, with all budgeting, and we're going to be shovel-ready. Uh, and then deliver her the executive summary uh, that would deliver her the, our phased program of what we would do in Stony Creek, depending upon where the funding comes from and how much money uh, would be coming. So we want to be ready for her uh, uh, moving forward. And now she put the ball in our court, and we need to deliver. So this is the summary uh, you have on your agenda tonight uh, on the consent agenda item W. That would give you, that's the proposal that we put together for the village. That is uh, to deliver both of those pieces. Uh, one, it would be the, the summary of the over, uh, uh, basically a, a stormwater management master plan for this area, number one, and number two, the shovel ready project that we can get funded. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer. Chris, I just have a comment. Um, I was at that meeting. When I looked at the number of studies that have been done by the Army Corps of Engineers, and the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District, we could have done this project twice over by the studies that they've produced but not delivered on. So it's amazing to me that we spent so much money and still have no results. Uh, I really look forward to somewhere, some projects where we get in and actually put a shovel in there. And I appreciate the work you've done. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And I, I could uh, uh, go two steps further. One is that during our review with MWRD, of the relocation of that sewer uh, behind the Marianos that, that bifurcates the detention pond, they were very supportive. As we reviewed the work that they've done and, and those five or six projects that they came up with, they didn't have that included in their, in their area, but that was uh, something that they would support. And number two, this excavation of Stony Creek Preserve was already identified in a study that was done by the Army Corps of Engineers. And it just hasn't been done. And why hasn't it been done? Because the money wasn't there. So we are, are aggressively pursuing uh, grant funding and working with Congresswoman Newman uh, to bring funding to get started on the Shovel Ready Project and get those segments uh, released as funding uh, presents itself. Chris, would you explain what this sheet 
depicts. I, I don't understand the phasing. Sure, the phasing is, uh, uh, but what I'm saying is, is that I'm not expecting her to give me $50 million. I'm expecting her to come maybe with some money this year, next year, three-year program, and, and work on it. What I want to be able to do is I want to be able to do this excavation in phases as monies become available. So I've identified, I'm going to put four or five different uh, projects in, and it's one overall project, but I know I'm not going to be able to build it all. I'm going to be able to build it a piece at a time. So th that's what that represents. So phase two, phase three, and phase four are actually excavations of Stony Creek? That's correct. Thank you. Chris, I, I just want to make a comment as well, echoing what Bud was talking about. This, you know, second to public safety, I think this, we can all agree, is probably the number one issue, uh, both from a cost, well, on multiple levels, cost um, to residents, inconvenience, quality of life, danger in, in many situations. And to Bud's point, this has been, all we hear hear about and have heard about 20 years of studies that have been done. And nothing really has changed. And we think one, once a study is done, it's the study, right? And to your point, I think I, the last time you were here, I mentioned that 15, 16 years ago, we were talking, why don't we just dig that creek deeper? Seemed like the, the most sensible thing to do. The only thing you're going to uh, interrupt is wildlife and probably not much of that. So I think it's important as a board. I know we just did this with some other measures. The mayor may be in charge here to get a letter out to Marie Newman, Congressman Newman, if, if we haven't already. Oak Lawn is the second largest constituency in the third congressional district behind the city of Chicago. That's correct. And, you know, we're hearing now, you know, infrastructure bill in the mul multiple trillions of dollars. You know, $50 million probably sounded like a lot of money a long time ago, but relatively speaking, we have a brand new congressperson looking to make an impact, second largest constituency. I agree with you. I think we should push for as much as possible, and this will impact positively thousands of people in the Congress district. So I think if we can get a letter out to her thanking her from the full board, um, you know, acknowledging the meeting that took place and, and stay on this. You know, thank you for doing that for us. Yes, uh, uh, and thank you for the comments. I also think that that letter uh, could include uh, that we are going to deliver. We're going to deliver those projects. We're going to have shovel-ready projects delivered to her, and uh, we want to continue to work with her and not let that, that phone go dead. Uh, we're going to be in communication with her uh, on a regular basis, and we're going to let her know. I'm going to turn this around so we can get a shovel in the ground. And as we've talked, I'm sorry, Alex, one more point. As we've talked about before, the executive director of NWR is a longtime Oakland resident from Trustee Stalker's district and a stone's throw from these phases you're speaking of. And, and I, we saw some correspondence where he was responsive, effectively telling us to continue to work through the local representative. But, you know, if and when there's a time to elevate, you would know better, well, Jeff, you know, Please don't hesitate to say we need Absolutely. some. We need some politics now. We need calls from electeds to move a ball further along. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Chris, I, first of all, I, I've, I've been uh, working with this board for 16 years on this very subject. And as Trustee Phelan mentioned and Trustee Stalker mentioned, we've heard a lot of of different comprehensive plans. Now I know that you were brought to the table to take a look at that automotion property, and then. Uh, lo and behold, you're able to take a look at how Stony Creek and the water levels there, and and uh, you bring a lot of experience to the table, and I appreciate everything that you have done. And I know that um, this is, as Trustee Phelan has said, the number one issue that affects all of Oak Lawn. We're all unified on this, whether you're living in the northern end of Oak Lawn or the southern end of Oak Lawn, the eastern and western, how this water goes through, especially, uh, and I got to see that, uh, the proposal of the retention for the 100-year, we hear the 100-year rain. Uh, unfortunately, uh, being a trustee for 16 years, we've seen the 100-year rain like five or six times. Uh, so uh, we're seeing more frequency of rain. So I, I, I like um, all the things that you have done and the, the different approach that you have taken, along with the attention that uh, Congressman Newman uh, is bringing to this. And as Trustee Phelan has said, uh, we in Oak Lawn uh, deserve this. Um, this is a quality of life issue, um, and I know that this board is unified in support of getting this done. So when you say shovel ready, 
and we're getting uh, very uh, hopeful with everything we've read and all the signs <clears throat> seem to be that MWRD is working with Army Corps of Engineer, which is working with uh, our congressional uh, people. When do you think that uh, from a time frame of this moving forward, when do you think we can see shovel ready and shovel moving? I will, I will be ha have the shovel-ready plants completed in 45 days. We'll have the, the tablecloth ready for her for funding. The bill that she's considering now that she, she targeted for funding now, because I have a bill under review and I have a meeting coming up literally in two weeks uh, to address this and, and position uh, correctly where the, the funding would go. Uh, it's an active bill. I do not think it's going to be long. So you actually think that spring of 2022, we will be moving forward? Yes. That's realistic. That is realistic. You heard it here first, spring of 2022. So, <laughs> and, and, and I, only, I only bring that up because to get a turning signal put at Central and Southwest Highway took uh, about 12 years. So I, I, I know that if we continue to look at this issue village-wide and continue to work, and especially when we have uh, talented people like yourself looking at it from a different angle, I'm very confident from everything I've seen that we should be able to see progress on this. And if it goes in 2022, what type of relief would we see in a 100-year reign? Will it take six months, a year? What, what I'm really looking at, and it, it is somewhat difficult, I could maybe have a meeting uh, separately to, to talk about the technical issue, but basically what we have here is a concept where if the floodplain is at elevation 100, now, according to the current mapping, and I do this excavation without doing anything else, without any development, without doing anything else, that floodplain, you would think, would be reduced. So the spread of the floodplain and the properties that are impacted just by the excavation of that preserve, <clears throat> the floodplain will be lowered. That means that auto motion site, my real target here is the auto motion site. Right now, it has floodplain on it. In doing this work, I want to remodel it, which I haven't done yet, which is part of, of the work that we're going to do. I want to see what the reduction is in the floodplain. That means that there, you know, if we get it out of the floodplain, there's no mitigation requirement to develop it. And not only that, but if the trustees would consider that to be a recapture fee because anybody that comes in has to put money towards detention of their project. So actually we're providing the storage and providing the benefit. Well, you're getting as, way too out there. I'm, I'm thinking about the residents that live off of 103rd Street. What I'm saying is now we'll not have to worry about heavy water when the two, three inch rain. Not only that, but, but what about the properties that are in the floodplain now that have to pay flood insurance? Yeah. Correct. And if I take that, the limit of that floodplain that was here, and I take it to here, well, all those people that are taken out of the floodplain would no longer need flood insurance. No, it's, a, it's exciting, and it's just the beginning of a huge opportunity for this village. So I appreciate all that you and your customers are doing. Yes, yeah, thank you. Chris, this is probably the best study I've seen <coughs> in the years uh, and the most realistic to accomplish. Uh, of course, it's all based on funding. Hopefully, uh, Marie Newman can deliver. Uh, some federal funds, then we can get this going. Uh, all the past studies failed simply because there was no money when they were done. We need to get the money to get your study done. And thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Justin Barr. Yes. Um, and I, have I, as I have communicated to a few uh, on the board, um, I have come to the decision to step down as village manager. Um, it's a tough decision. Um, I think. Um, I appreciate the opportunity the board gave me, um, but um, at this point in time, I think it's better that um, I retire, as I wanted to do uh, back in August uh, when I retired as chief, and um, I was asked to step into the role and carry the village through until we could get through the tough time of COVID, and I think we've done that. Um, as I said before, I think we're seeing um, the light on, on the other side of the tunnel, uh, as indicated by us all sitting on the dais today and, and, and the crowd we have. Um, I'd like to thank the board personally um, for giving me that opportunity. And I'd also like to thank the staff that um, 
that made it possible for us to get the job done. So thank you all. Randy, the thanks goes to you. Uh, years and years of excellent police work, leadership, stepping into this job at a difficult time. Uh, I can't think of a, a better person that could have done the job, and you should be very proud of yourself. I'm proud to know you. Uh, could I just make a comment? I understand that uh, Randy just bought himself a new putter today, <laughs> and there are desires to get him on the pro tour. So you may see him there very soon. Look forward to it. Great, greatest luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if I could add, too, and I'm hopeful this isn't your last official meeting because nobody's prepared for comments, but it might be. Um, I was joking with uh, Randy recently, uh, and I think one of the reasons he's pulling the trigger now is he's, with each passing day, he's getting better and better at the job. And uh, before he gets too good and we don't allow him to leave, um, and I mean that in all sincerity. I've sat in meetings a year ago where you would basically say, well, it's not an area I'm familiar with, TIFs or incentives. Or, you know, and one of these last meetings we sat in, you would have thought you were talking to somebody who's been doing this for 30 years. So uh, I think you're young enough that maybe you shouldn't shut the door on this completely and if nothing else, be a consultant for people in this capacity because I think you've done a great job. And as we know, an organization like this, and not just because it's government, but government doesn't help. Um, personnel is difficult. Bargaining units and, and rules and legislation that you know, pro prohibits us from doing what we might do in the private sector when we're up against challenges. It's, my estimation, probably 80% of the job. And you spent 30 years dealing with just that. So I think we were very fortunate. And I'd like to echo with uh, the mayor and what Bud said. Uh, you really did us a, a great service carrying us through this. And um, hopefully it's not the last time we're going to see you. No, no, right. for sure. Uh, Tom, I, I had a conversation with him today. I, he's not going completely away <laughs> here for, for <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. leading us into the next phase. Did you get him a phone that works on the golf course? <laughs> I was just going to say, from the golf course. <laughs> yeah, right. And Snap. I'm happy to accept you from the golf course. Right. Yeah. Anything else? Anything else, Randy? Thanks. Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Board. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to number nine, the consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are routine, and they have been brought forward at direction of the Board of Trustees and will be enacted with one motion. If discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. A, a request of the trustees' approval and the direction of the Fire and Police Commission to hire one patrol officer from the current eligibility list due to the retirement and pending disability hearing. B, a request Board of Trustees approval and direction to the Fire and Police Commission to hire two firefighter paramedics due to one retirement and one resignation. C, request to approve Zoning and Planning Commission referral for an impervious surface variation for 4059 was the 106th place. Paul Malinsky's the petitioner was approved by P and D seven and zero. And D is an ordinance approving that. E is a request to approve zoning and planning commission referral for an impervious service variation for 116 Kaminsky. William Fairman is the petitioner. P and D approval seven to zero. And F is an ordinance approving that. A request to approve Zoning and Planning Commission uh, referral for a lot width and lot variation for 9,000 South Central Avenue. Robert Knapp is the petitioner, uh, 7 0 approval by PD, and H is an ordinance approving that. I is a request to approve Zoning and Planning Commission referrals of an impervious service and second driveway variation for 9325 South Sayre. Uh, Garcila Canis is the petitioner. P&D approved that seven to zero, and J is an ordinance to approve that. K is a request to approve Zoning and Planning Commission referral for a special use permit, tower setback variation, tower separation variation, tower design variation, tower height variation, building corner side yard variation, fence height variation, and fence material variation for 9801 South Massasoit. 
Our Oak Lawn Regional Emergency Communications is requesting that, and that was approved by Planning and Development with a 7-0 vote. Uh, I is an ordinance approving that. M, an ordinance 211154 authorizing the sale of one surplus vehicle that has reached its useful lifespan. N is an ordinance 211155 amending a section of Title II, Chapter 22, entitled Liquor Licensing and Review Commission. O is an ordinance 211156 amending Title IX, Chapter 4, Article E, entitled use and consumption tax, water use and consumption tax of the Oak Lawn Village Code. P, Ordinance 211157, approving the First Amendment to the redevelopment plan and project area for the Village of Oak Lawn Patriot Station, TIF District, and the addition particles, uh, parcels thereto. Q, Ordinance 211158, approving an intergovernmental agreement between the Village of Oak Lawn Oak Lawn Community High School District 227 and Oak Lawn Hometown School District 123 pertaining to the First Amendment to the Patriot Station TIF plan and project area. Our ordinance number 2021-1159 amending Title III Chapter 29 entitled Video Gaming. S, Resolution 311-34 approving and authorizing the Village of Oak Lawn use of Community Development Block Grant CARES Act, CDBG-CV3, grant funds for the COVID-19 Small Business Loan Program. T is a resolution 2111 approving the bid of Bravo S Services Incorporated for custodial services from July 1st, 2021 to July 31st, 2023. U is a resolution 211136 approving the bid of M&J Asphalt Paving pursuant to the 2021 Concrete Repair Program. V is a resolution 211137 approving Lindell Brothers Incorporated to uh, contract to perform the 2021 Street Program. W is a resolution authorizing a professional services agreement with CM Lovey and Associates Incorporated to perform certain engineering services pertaining to the stormwater project. And X, resolution 211140, approving the bid of Misero, Misero uh, Insurance Services Incorporated, an alliant owned company for insurance broker services. A motion to approve? So moved. Second. I'll second. We almost ran out of letters. Yeah, we did. We got down to X. Okay. Uh, any discussion? I'd like to have K and L removed from the consent agenda. Any other? Madam Clerk, would you call a vote on uh, all but K and L? Trustee Stalker. Yes. Trustee Olenichek. Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Phelan? Yes. Trustee Pembroke? Yes. Trustee Milo? Yes. Okay. Uh, K is a request to approve the Zoning and Planning Commission referral for a special use permit, tower setback variation, tower separation variation, tower design variation, tower height variation, building corner side yard variation, fence height variation, <coughs> and fence materials at 9801 South Massasoit, request by the Oakland Regional Emergency Communication Centers. And L is an ordinance to approve that. A motion? Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. Yeah, uh, Mayor, yes. Mr. Mayor. First of all, I want to tell you that I'm completely supportive of building a new OREC center. OREC is the 911 center. Uh, we cooperate with many communities in the area to uh, dispatch police and fire. And they do a great job, but they've run out of room. Uh, they're crowded where they are and they should move. But I want to show you where they're moving. This, this map is hard to see, but right here is 98th Street. Uh, 
this is massasoit and central is this way this is within 50 feet of the commuter rail line that has trains going through at 50 miles an hour it has a lot of freight traffic uh, there's a water tower that it's the shadow of i come from a background of commonwealth edison and when we build something that's going to be necessary for the safety of the community we don't build it within 50 feet of a railroad track, especially a high-speed, unguarded railroad. We also don't build it in the shadow of a water tower. And I've been preaching this for a while, and I just wonder why in our infinite wisdom with all the property available in Oak Lawn, we've decided to take this particular property, which is very difficult to believe they can guard properly, and who's gonna call 911 when a train derails, or when the water tower falls. I just don't understand it, and I'd like to have an answer to those questions before we approve this motion. I want this building built. I want it built soon. But I'm really concerned about building it here. Thank you. All right. Uh, you know, this has been researched for a number of years. Many, many sites have been looked at. Bud, you were part of that process. I agree it has, and they picked the wrong one. Well, uh, uh, Dana, you want to comment on this? You, you're, Dana is our uh, emergency communication center coordinator, and she's very, very involved over the years in this concept development and site selection. Deanna? Sure. Um, so, Trustee Stalker, you're right. I mean, we did look at various sites in the village that were available at the time. Um, most of the sites that we looked at were not, they didn't have enough space. Um, we're not, we're tax exempt, we're a public entity. The sites that were available, they had an opportunity for investment. So to grow Oak Lawn, we want, you know, the tax dollars to keep coming in. So property that is bringing in tax revenue or, or potential revenue for taxpayers isn't, you know, ideal. I mean, we'd rather keep that on the tax roll. When this property was brought to our attention, we did have an engineer come look at it. Uh, the consulting firm that we deal with, the architectural firm, they did a survey, they did a site study, and they have built towers next to water, you know, other water towers. Um, there's other centers that are, are near a railroad track, to be honest. The building is supposed to withstand, uh, it's a solid concrete, it's supposed to withstand any natural disaster. They claim I can, it can hit, get hit by a train. Um, so I don't necessarily, we want to keep it in Oak Lawn. The joint board would like to keep it in Oak Lawn. And when I refer to joint board, it's we dispatch for, um, as Trustee pointed out, we have six police departments and eight fire departments that we dispatch for. And they're all in agreement that the village of Oak Lawn is our, it's our biggest, you know, we're our biggest customer, right? We're the biggest in the, the south, Southland. It's a regional center. We'd like to keep it in the village of Oak Lawn. Um, and it's not costing you know, any more taxpayer dollars, we're using our capital reserve to fund it, um, loan to do that with. So the other op opportunity could have been to go and explore, you know, Village of Hodgkins or ELSIP. But the majority agreed that this is an investment, a long investment. We've always been with the Village of Oak Lawn. We've been located in this building since it was built to keep it here for the residents and to, you know, to provide that. So. We did have an opportunity to look at other things, and some of it that may have worked, you know, wound up being sold, or, you know, more, I guess a better option for, you know, keeping tax revenue coming in. I, I mean, I don't just know. just to All piggyback right. on that real quick, um, Diana, um, we did have a public meeting last night. Um, the engineers were there. Um, there was a lot of good explanation, as Mayor Vorderer could probably attest to. He was there to listen to the proper plan. Uh, as Diana mentioned, they they have built these types of facilities in DeKalb um, on public property, which is the, where the water tower is. It it does make sense to me. It does look great. Um, it's going to bring a, a better look to that community that it currently has in that space. Um, they've done a great job with uh, the in and out of the uh, the employees at that lot. It will be a quiet type of place, and and they will come and they do their job. Um, one of the biggest points from last night were the tower and the new tower that's going up. Our current tower um, that 911 utilizes um, also has Sprint, AT&T, T-Mobile on it. 
So sometimes when they have to come and fix things, sometimes things get damaged. Uh, the new tower that would be going up next to the water tower um, where the building is located will bring a safety uh, first issue with their communications, which will, you know, not be able to be damaged by others at that point. So Let me suggest that I, I just stated that I work for Commonwealth Edison and we have a belt and suspender, suspenders approach. What is the, we build transmission towers and railroad right-of-ways. The reason we do that is you're right, the land is inexpensive, but we always have a switching probability where we can switch around any accident that occurs at any railroad bed. What is the workaround for the 911 center? I don't see one. You have one 911 center. How many communities do you serve? We serve eight fire and six police, and we do have, let's say there's a giant natural disaster. Nobody can do it. Our backup center at Southwest Dispatch, and they're located in Palos Heights. Which is not even close to as capable as what? Yeah, and it doesn't need to be. It's a backup center. So currently, even if we have an overflow of 911 calls or we lose all communication, it goes into another center, typically further away from a center that's near you in case of a natural disaster. Diana, I strongly support the reconstruction of an all rec 911 center. I just don't support it at this location because of the proximity to a water tower and a train. All right? That's what I wanted to say. And I will vote no. Uh, just one more thing for the record. We had a small uh, uh, group of residents from the area, okay, at the public hearing. And I think uh, they came prepared to fight it, but by, after Diana's presentation, in our engineer's presentation, I think they left here satisfied. I would have been happy to be here last night, but I was in Grant Park doing working. Well, Grant Park, Illinois, can't be down every, south. Yeah, we can't be everywhere. If I could piggyback off that too, uh, Mayor and Board. Um, I'd also like to remind the residents that the majority of this funding is, is not coming from Oak Lawn, but is coming from the consolidation aspect of all of the communities that are involved in the consortium of the group. So it, it's not a, a total hit to the village um, budget. It, that will be spread out among all the communities that are involved. And that's how many, Diana, do we have on that? Is that 11? So there, there are six members six. of the board, but it's not even part of the budget. Um, we already have capital reserve that we collect annually, and that's what we'll be using to fund. So it's, it's it'll be seamless as far as a budget goes. Whether it's built here or elsewhere, right? Correct. Uh, Andy, you, you, yeah, Andy, Andy, uh, he lives right there. No one called me for a meeting. Well, the, the notices go out to all residents within 300 feet by village ordinance on oh, every one of these. 24, that's pretty close. What? Is it not? Oh, would you step up to the podium, Andy? This is the first I've heard of it. I live at 9724 South Massasoit, 52 years. I, this is the first I've heard of this. I know we haven't had meetings, but I never was told about this. None of my neighbors were, because they would have asked me about it. Well, we, we had neighbors here. Well, I'm not saying you didn't, but not me. So the notices went out in compliance with the ordinance. And well, like, I'm just saying, nobody's... Well, maybe you live outside the 300 <laughs> zone. How? Yeah, I, we welcome your comment, Andy. But uh, I'm just it's saying. Not appropriate at this time. No, I'm just saying that that's a cul-de-sac. How, how are you going to get traffic there? No, well, Andy, that is all designed. That was all presented yeah. last night at the public meeting. I wish I knew about it. Well, I can't uh, can't go back in hit, uh, time. Thank you. But uh, anyway, I think most of the residents that came were very satisfied with the plan. Uh, the building is beautifully constructed. It uh, cosmetically will improve that piece of property. It'll actually hide the railroad tracks and quiet some of the train traffic. Those were the type of things discussed last night. Any more discussion on the issue? All right, uh, would you call the vote, Madam Clerk? Trustee Stalker? No. Trustee Olenichuk? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Phelan? Yes. Trustee Pembroke? Yes. Trustee Mallow? Yes. Motion passes five to one. Uh, 
Number 10, a resolution waiving the competitive bidding requirements and awarding J and J Newell Concrete Contractors Incorporated a contract for 2021 50 50 sidewalk program. We require a two thirds vote on this. Uh, is there a motion? A motion. A second? I'll okay. second. Madam Clerk, call the vote. Trustee Stalker? Yes. Trustee Olenichak? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Phelan? Yes. Trustee Pembroke? Yes. Trustee Mallow? Yes. Motion passes. Motion passes. Number 11, propose reassignment to trustees committees and liaisons. Uh, Trustee Phelan and uh, Trustee Olenichak have this on the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second? I'll second. All in favor, roll call. Trustee Stalker? Yes. Trustee Olenichak? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Phelan? Yes. Trustee Pembroke? Yes. Trustee Mallow? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, the village clerk's report? Yes. We have the approval of disbursement resolution number 2021-11D in the amount of $6,921,000. $28.72. Do we have a motion to approve? Move to approve the bills. Second. Yeah, we'll <laughs> Second. Roll call, please. Trustee Stalker. Yes. Trustee Olenichek. Yes. Trustee Desmond. Yes. Trustee Phelan. Yes. Trustee Pembroke. Yes. Trustee Mallow. Yes. Motion passes. Motion passes. No other new business. Okay. Village President's Report A. A request to approve a liquor license in uh, review commission referral to increase the number of class N liquor licenses that can be issued in the village of Oak Lawn for Cardinal Liquor Barn, 9620 Southwest Highway. Jim Shiraz is the petitioner, and B is an ordinance increasing that number of uh, liquor licenses. Motion. So moved. Second. I'll second. Alex. Okay. Call the vote. Trustee Stalker? Yes. Trustee Olenichuk? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Phelan? Yes. Trustee Pembroke? Yes. Trustee Mallow? Yes. Motion, Motion passes. Uh, C is a request to approve the liquor license and review commission referral to increase the number of Class F liquor licenses and Class N liquor licenses that can be issued in the Village of Oak Lawn. Shake Shack 4071 West 95th Street is the petitioner. And D is an ordinance approving that request. Uh, I have a motion. Motion to approve. A second. A second. Trustee Stalker? Yes. Trustee Olenichuk? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Phelan? Yes. Trustee Pembroke? Yes. Trustee Mello? Yes. Motion approved. Uh, I would like to take the time to congratulate the Oakland VFW <coughs> Post 5220 for their Memorial Day event. In all the years that I've been attending that Memorial Day event, I've never seen a larger and bigger crowd. And I wanna thank all the residents that came out to recognize those who gave their life in the protection and defense of your freedoms. <clears throat> and I would also like to congratulate a gentleman by the name of Mike Cerf and uh, the Oakland Raiders, and too many businesses really to list for their commitment to our police department and fire department. Uh, they had a first responder walk over uh, at uh, Lakeshore Park. It's called the annual Blue Ribbon Walk Saturday. A couple of hundred people were there. Uh, this gentleman has been doing this now for seven and eight years. It's only grown larger. And in this day and time, uh, recognizing our public uh, safety officers and our 911 dispatchers is more critical than it's ever been. So congratulations, Mike, sir. Uh, okay, uh, executive session 2021-9 for the purpose of discussing one, approval of the closed meeting minutes of 2021-08 dated May 25th, 2021, and two, the setting of a price for the sale or lease of property owned by a public body. Do we have a motion? So move. A second. Second. All in favor. A roll call. Trustee Stalker. Yes. Trustee Olenichek. Yes. Trustee Desmond. Yes. Trustee Phelan. Yes. Trustee Pembroke. Yes. Trustee Mallow. Yes. 
Thank you. I have to ask everybody uh, that isn't directly related to this to leave. We will, uh, if you have any other issues, we will call the meeting back to order after the executive session.